another NJ Thrive Small Business Webinar. Uh, these are weekly webinars, and we create them for New Jersey small business owners to help you start, grow, and thrive. So I'm your host, Christian Pichardo, NJSPDC Specialty Consultant and CEO at NilamaMedia.com. So we're the America's New Jersey Small Business Development Centers Network. So we're a statewide program powered by the SBA and partners, and we help small businesses in New Jersey with no-cost small business consulting, training and events like this one starting at $0, and exclusive small business resources. As for today's agenda, we go over a couple small business headlines. We'll jump into the webinar, and um, I'll encourage everyone to, to ask your questions throughout the presentation, but we'll have a dedicated um, Q&A session uh, towards the end. So headlines for the week. So it is Women's History Month. And the SBA um, created a, a wonderful page on, on specific events um, and some history on women-owned businesses. Uh, it looks like there's, for the, for the past five years, total employment by women-owned business rose 8%. 5.4 million firms are majority owned by women of color in the US. In 2020, women-owned business executed 344,000 contracts across the US. And in 2021, 1.1 million of all businesses were owned by women. So this month is for you. And thank you. Without you, uh, none of us would be here. <laughs> so second uh, news item here. New Jersey lawmakers proposed letting drivers pump their own gas. So um, if you're a gas station owner, and this is passed, it has not been passed, but if it's passed, then gas station owners will have the option to allow self-service and offer a discount for drivers who pump their own gas. So if you own a gas station owner or know someone who does, this will be an option. I know us um, New Jerseyans have been very spoiled. We are the last, one of the last states uh, that don't pump our own gas. So yeah, that is potentially coming. Um, next one here is the ban on plastic bags and polystyrene foam. Um, so this has been in talks since I believe last year, around May, I think. Um, so this is starting May of this year. So this is just a reminder. Basically, anything plastic is going to be banned. So, you know, we encourage you to plan for that. Um, you know, start getting your branded canvas bags to sell. Start getting your, you know, branded um, metal straws to sell because plastic is no more. After May, that is. And then the last news item here, I thought it was just interesting, not totally specific to New Jersey, but Alibaba.com. As you know, or if you don't know, they are basically the wholesale pseudo Amazon version in Asia. So they, they did a survey of small businesses, of B2B small businesses, small businesses in the US. And they saw that the businesses that digitized their operations saw more sales growth over the past two years versus analog counterparts. So um, here's this article. You know, it's I think it's um, always helpful to see how other businesses um, are doing in this day and age, obviously with the pandemic and everything we've had to sort of digitize more of our operations. Um, but this not only helps you, I know it might be scary if you're going from, you know, 
uh, writing all your transactions in a book to, to QuickBooks, you know, it's a, it's a big change, but I think it's um, necessary and not only necessary, but it'll help you. These things are, not only do they automate your business, they make it a lot easier to see data, a lot easier, easier to see your growth, um, just a bunch of things. So if you haven't already, I'd say embrace technology where we're moving forward um, in that direction. So those are our headlines. We will drop the links to all of them into the chat. Things to keep in mind before we start the webinar is please type your questions into the Q&A box. Um, you can ask your questions anonymously as well inside of there. And two, please uh, complete a three minute survey after this webinar closes out, you'll be redirected to the survey. Once you complete the survey, you'll be able to get access to the webinar material. So the slideshow, our presenter's slideshow, and also the recording of the video, of this webinar, sorry. And now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Gina and Jamie for part three of the Entrepreneur's Guide to Success on Zoom. And we're gonna learn today presentation skills and a tech checklist. Great, thank so, you, Chris. And it's great yeah. uh, that all of you can join us again today. We've been together for the past three Thursdays and you know, building on what Chris just mentioned regarding news headlines, of course, you're all here with us uh, to learn how to make the most of you know, digitizing and you know, using your virtual environment. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen with you all. So uh, in the chat, I'd love to hear, I, I've been seeing all these wonderful businesses. Hi, Joseph, nice to see you again. Um, let me know where you're Zooming from, because I know uh, we've been reaching out past New Jersey's borders. That's been fantastic. And of course, uh, Jamie and I want to answer all of your questions. So please go ahead and put them in the Q&A, and we will certainly get to them uh, at the end of today's presentation. All right, Lakehurst. All right, Elizabeth. So New Jersey's in the house today. This is great. Texas, great. I used to live in Austin, Marsha. I used to work at University of Texas in Austin. Humble, Texas, all right. Very good, okay, Brigantine. Manalpin, right around the corner from me. I'm in, uh, I'm in Monroe Township. All right, well, uh, through the, the wonder of virtual, we can all be here together. And it's just been, you know, the silver lining uh, during these past two years, right? We've been able to network and you know, grow our businesses uh, despite the challenges. So in today's session, we'll open up with a quick review of last week. Recall we learned about best practices and how to really engage, whether it's your employees, uh, other colleagues, or you know, uh, you know, your clients and, and casual situations to make your meetings more human, right? Uh, and then today's agenda, we're going to look at the technical side of things, uh, you know, to make your, your meetings go more smoothly with your clients uh, and your employees. You'll learn how to prepare for any situation. I think I've experienced all of it uh, <laughs> over the past two years, uh, even a power outage. So I'll, I'll go ahead and share that with you. And then uh, we'll talk about setting up your space. You know, and I have some equipment recommendations, of course, that will not uh, break the bank. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. And then we'll hear from uh, Jamie, my co-presenter today. She is a 30-year uh, business owner, uh, professional organ organizer, and best-selling author. And we'll hear how she made the transition from her all-in-person business to majority virtual, completely virtual, over these past two years and was able to expand it beyond New Jersey's borders because of virtual. So, and then of course we wanna take all of your questions. So uh, go ahead and put them in the Q and A. So before we get going, uh, you know, I wanna hear about what is the uh, participant behavior uh, that really irritates you the most. So please go ahead and take a second to answer this poll. Is it? Uh, the mic on while not speaking. When you see people eating on camera, does that drive you crazy? 
uh, or when somebody's driving on camera, I'm more nervous that they're going to get into a car accident. You know, hopefully they're not driving behind me, right? Um, so I want, I'm interested to see, I recently ran this poll on LinkedIn and uh, we'll see if your results mirror uh, the uh, survey results I had on LinkedIn. All right, we'll give it another second. And uh, you can also write in the chat box, you know, what's the craziest thing that you've seen or heard uh, over these past two years? I'm sure we can all write volumes, right, of some of the crazy we've seen. Okay. Let's see, we'll go ahead and end the poll. Okay, so it looks like eating on camera uh, really wins out here. Uh, compared to a mic on while not speaking and driving while on camera. So on LinkedIn, it was, you know, the hot mic moments, uh, you know, that folks have their, their microphones on. And uh, recall last week, I talked about props, and this is just a fun way, uh, you know, to add some levity to the most used phrases over the past two years, right, that we can't, you're muted, and uh, please mute. I'll have the link again if you'd like to uh, make your own sign. I'll uh, I'll have the link again at the end of today's presentation. You can uh, download that craft from my website and make your own. All right, so uh, you know, it's it's these moments, you know, again of etiquette, right? No matter where you are. So recall last week we talked about best practices as both a presenter and a participant. You know how to make videos you know, video meetings more human, you know, we again, we talked about the props, uh, Jamie talked about using a timer uh, with her audience when when she's running, uh, you know, organizing exercises. We talked about, you know, think virtual first, you know, shorten your content, you know, uh, there are more distractions when we're in a smaller space, you know, uh, you know, make time for icebreakers and the chit chat, you know, don't be so jam packed with your agendas. You know, and again, to get your audience involved, right? Uh, assign roles to participants. You know, whether it's like Chris today, who's a uh, who's a moderator, and he's you know helping behind the scenes with Q and A, uh, or you have others who may be you know recording your content and then sharing that out across your channels. And again, use uh, tools like we just did with polls uh, and props, you know, to engage your audience. And just a quick review of our virtual meetings uh, best practices, of course, silence your phone. Uh, my phone never rings unless I'm in a meeting. So silence your phone uh, and turn off those notifications, uh, especially if you're sharing, you happen to be sharing content, uh, like if you have LinkedIn open, you know, you, you get that little ding sound, you know, so you can mute, mute your sites. Uh, raise your hand to speak. I'm a talker. I know that <laughs> I'm always around a lot of talkers. So you can raise your hand to speak or, or use that, uh, you know, hand icon that we talked about last week on the Zoom toolbar. And of course, whether you're in person or virtual, right? You want to have, you know, your, your audience wants to have your attention and, you know, you know, pay attention. So, you know, mute yourself if you must type. If you have to take a phone call, you know, take yourself off camera. If you have to eat, Right, it happens. Right, we have meetings like wall to wall sometimes. Take yourself off camera. Uh, nobody, as as we've seen here with our audience today, we don't want to see you eating on camera, and uh, nobody wants to see an empty chair on camera. Right, so if you must step away, that's a great time to, you know, uh, turn off your camera. And we talked about using interactive features of your platform. So uh, whether it's you know using filters here again, I'm showing the fun 3D glass glasses, uh, you know, to have have some fun, have some levity uh, with your audience. You can also uh, use the uh, icons to uh, conduct a quiz. If you didn't want to do a poll, you can just do a, a quiz in gallery view uh, when you're in zoom meeting. So today we are going to cover the best practices to ensure your video me meetings go smoothly every time. So I use the term Zoom, but this applies to any, any virtual meeting platform. So whether you're using GoToMeeting, you know, Teams, uh, you know, Google Meet, you know, these are really universal tips. You know, there are many things that you can do in advance you know, to reduce anxiety during meetings with clients. You know, maybe you, you're about to close a big deal uh, or, you know, employees or even casual situations, you know, even if you're, you know, running a book, a book club. Uh, this is for non techies. So don't worry, there is no anxiety here. Uh, I'm keeping this in, in general lay, layperson's terms. So 
you know, no matter the situation, right? If you're an athlete, a chef, uh, the professional, you know, you need to prepare before you begin, right? So I share many of these tips based on, you know, my experiences, you know, ranging from power outages to the dreaded Windows software update. Uh, you know, shut it down. If it's a big presentation or you have something going on, or even just weekly, I recommend restarting your computer to avoid updates. Uh, I had a situation where I was about to go live with a program and Windows was running one of its automatic updates and had the message, this could take a while. I I almost had a stroke, you know, <laughs> you, know it's, uh, you know, a while, I have 12 minutes, what do you mean? So, uh, you know, be prepared. So I learned, you know, restart your computer, turn off your notifications, test your technology. So, uh, for example, I mentioned this uh, previously, you know, if you let's say you're you're in your store, you're in your business location, and let, let's say you go off site to meet clients uh, for meetings and you come back and plug in your devices. Uh, mine, at least it, it goes back to its default settings. So, you know, check that your microphones, you know, the right one selected, check that your Wi Fi, your Wi Fi or Ethernet's on, you know, your cameras, you know, good to go. Uh, test features like screen sharing if you are about to do a presentation. And that's easily done, you know, a few minutes before your meeting. And, you know, be prepared, like in any situation, right? Queue up a copy of your notes. Uh, know the mobile version of your video platform. I had a situation uh, last summer, we had Hurricane Isais roll through, we had 109 mile an hour winds, power was out for several days uh, where I was, where I'm located, big trees came down. So I had to rely on the mobile version of Zoom, right, and doing screen share to operate some presentations. So uh, take a moment, again, not asking you to read the 72 page manual on your phone or Zoom, but take, take a moment to get, you know, familiarize yourself with uh you know the, the the features that you'll be using frequently on the mobile version of your uh video conference platform so i mentioned you know before every meeting do an equipment check uh this is easily done uh on the zoom toolbar by selecting the there's a carrot to the right of the microphone icon uh on on your zoom toolbar and when you select it you can see here with the big red arrow it says about three quarters of the way down on my menu, it says test speaker and microphone. So when you select that, you'll hear a, a, a melody. If you can hear that, that means that your speaker is the correct one. And then uh, Zoom will ask you to speak. And if you hear yourself back, that means you have the right uh, microphone um, selected. So my list might look a little longer than yours because I am using an external microphone. Uh, and I have a couple other options attached to my device. And similarly with video, uh, I'm using an external webcam. I am not using the onboard uh, camera on my device. So you can do the same thing next to the, uh, the, the um, camera icon on your toolbar. There's the little carrot to the right. You select that and all of your camera options will come up. And this is the same menu we've talked about in the past where you can access your virtual background and video filters. So this is all local to your Zoom desktop. Uh, you don't have to go into your uh, Zoom account uh, uh, through the web browser. Okay, so I'm interested to hear um, whether or not you rely on Wi-Fi or Ethernet for your uh, your video meeting connection. So please take a second uh, to answer our poll. Okay, looks like we have most of our results in. Okay. Well, it, uh, this again, mi this mirrors uh, my results on my recent LinkedIn poll. It looks like a majority of you, 85-15 uh, split, are uh, relying on Wi-Fi over Ethernet. So uh, 
unfortunately, Wi-Fi can be very spotty, right? We've all experienced it. You sometimes get the wonder wheel. Uh, you know, Ethernet is the best way to go. Uh, pictured here, it you know it looks like the landline phone cable. Uh, but if you can't get wired in, uh, here are some recommendations on your Zoom settings that can help increase your bandwidth uh, in your speed, especially if you're operating out of a home office and not in a commercial, you know, commercial setting. Uh, there are differences between uh, commercial internet service and residential internet service. So uh, on the um, Zoom toolbar, when you selected the, the video, a uh, little carrot next to the video camera icon, it brings up this menu. And as you can see with the red arrow, there are certain features and ones I happen to love. However, they take up a lot of bandwidth. So uh, that would be the touch up my appearance, right? Uh, it makes you look a little glossier, a little, you know, you know, a little smoother, right? As we've been looking at ourselves constantly for two years. So if you uncheck those boxes and also the adjust for low light feature, that can help boost your, uh, your uh, uh, bandwidth. Uh, settings for that. So, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge if you are relying on wireless. And I know Jamie's had some situations in the past uh, about, you know, using, you know, relying on Wi-Fi. So, uh, you know, you, 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 she'll talk about that in a moment. Other things that you can do on your computer, for example, if you have excess browser tabs open, go ahead and close them, okay? Uh, also, you know, if you, um, if, if you must rely on the Wi-Fi with, with the browser tabs and you're streaming video, okay? If you take that video content and kind of fast forward through it in advance uh, before you're running your live program, that will help reduce the buffering. Because uh, I know, you know, not many of you, you know, it's, it's challenging to get a direct connection. I was fortunate, uh, I was able to get Verizon to come on in during the pandemic with their labor challenges and everything and run a direct line for my business. So I do not have to share that bandwidth with uh, other members in my household that are, are working from home. So Jamie, uh, what's your story? I know you've had some challenges with, uh, you know, using Wi-Fi. I sure have, Gina. I, and I understand sometimes that is the only option. So I love that you are giving us um, an opportunity to see where we might be able to take the load off of the Wi-Fi and make it uh, stream a little faster so that we're not delayed or the video is not fuzzy or we lose connection altogether. Um, but as you say, connecting with the ethernet, I thought it was gonna be very complicated and I wasn't quite sure what to do, but um, you know, it made it very simple. I found my ethernet cable, which was in my box of random cables that's in my utility closet, all the cables, connectors and cords that I never quite know what they go to. Well, that's where I found that really thick, um, for me, it was a yellow cable and it has that very delicate plastic prong at the end that plugged directly into my desktop and then right into the modem. And it was, I thought, just as easy as that. And it really would have been if I had known to then go into my Wi-Fi setting and turn it off. I mistakenly thought that simply plugging in the ethernet would override the Wi-Fi. And in my desktop setting, that's not the case. So it might not be for you as well. So it was important just to go to the Wi-Fi, turn it off, and then ethernet was connected. So that's the connection I'm joining you with. And it really is a visible difference um, for me, at least when I tested um, Wi-Fi versus ethernet. So I have a lot more confidence in having an actual wire. Um, for me, I kind of think of it, the difference between a cell phone and a landline, right? So the landline's always gonna work um, in an emergency, I guess, unless the power goes out. So if the power goes out, um, also important, and Gina's going to touch on this in just a moment, but one other thing I learned, Gina, was to reset my modem, and this is something that I also didn't know, but um, that's usually on 24-7, 365, and so when I called tech support, they were like, yeah, you probably want to, you know, schedule at least once a month, if you can, once a week, when you're not going to be going on a program, so sometime, you know, just in case something goes wrong, but actually unplug and or power on and off your modem and reset it. And that was such um, a great speed increaser. Uh, I, I was amazed at the difference that it made. So if you're getting a little nervous about all these connections, Gina, would you suggest um, taking a picture of maybe the setup with your phone so that you could reference it next time if you're not quite sure 
what plugs into what? Yeah, so um, later I have I can show you uh, where my Ethernet connection is, but I can also suggest Jamie makes a great point about you know your modem. You know where if you are operating your business out of your residence and not at a particular you know uh, on-site office location or a retail location, uh, you know where is your internet connection coming into your home? In my particular situation, my home office is the complete opposite side of my home. So you may want to um, invest in, you know, uh, a, a booster for your home and they plug in uh, the ones we use. It's called Eero. It's E-E-R-O. And they plug in to a, a regular outlet. Uh, so we have a few of those throughout our home, uh, you know, to help boost the Internet signal as well, especially, you know, the challenge was, you know, my phone was dropping calls, so I still I still go 1990s. I like to talk on the phone as well. Uh, so that's also helped with, you know, wireless calling within our residence. Uh, you know, but again, sometimes the weather, my house, the way it's wired, I don't know who wired this house. Uh, sometimes when it rains and I was on a Wi-Fi, I noticed that I wasn't getting a connection. And of course, very stressful. Uh, most of my programs, I do uh, stream a lot of video content and I have found that the only way to go is to be wired in, have a direct connection, an Ethernet connection. So um, that being said, uh, moving on, you know, so now you're connected, right? But you want to look great, and I I keep stressing this. I've mentioned this over our past few weeks together. Uh, you know, we when we talked about our executive presence in our first uh, our first session together. You know, during your media your video meetings, you want to have your staging and styling. So. Uh, I'm using a green screen. It's pictured here. This a particular one is called Web Around. Uh, this is my office chair. It attaches to any office chair. Uh, when I had that mysterious Windows update that was going to take a while, I was able to quickly pack up this green screen, go to a different part of my home and use a different computer and get online, you know, like nothing ever happened. Of course, my blood pressure was high, but, you know, we made it work. Uh, and, and, you know, this is especially great uh, mention again, if you uh, do not have, uh, you know, a dedicated office space or sharing space. I know in the past uh, I've heard from you where you're sharing, you know, whether it's a living room, a kitchen, a bedroom, um, you know, that this is great that it doesn't take up a lot of floor real estate like a traditional green screen. Uh, and again, you know, do not use a virtual background without a green screen because you'll tend to look like that amoeba, right? Uh, and sometimes parts of your body will come disappear in and out because your camera can't really uh, catch up with you in terms of the uh, depth of field and focus. So, uh, you know, and we also uh, looked at Jamie's setup last week where she uses her natural background, which is always best, uh, of course, if you're not uh, in a shared space, uh, you know, but she, she showed the youth use of uh, plants and how she had her book and, and really uh, use it, using it to her advantage for her business. So here's a little behind the scenes of my setup of where I'm coming from you today. As you can see, it's a tight space. Uh, you know, I don't have any background in film or TV. Uh, and at times I felt like the consumer reports of testing equipment and, you know, what works for me. So pictured here are low cost items. Uh, that I find necessary to ensure professional first impression. And even if, you know, you're in person, you know, again, I, I have a mix of in-person clients and virtual clients, um, you know, you can, you know, bring some things on the road with you or like Jamie showed last week, she has her virtual office in a box, you know, that, you know, uh, neatly packed away that when she needs her webcam or, you know, she needs, um, you know, certain part things for her devices, she's able to quickly take it out and put it up. So for example, if you are in that retail space uh, and you have maybe a stock room space that you can, you can make a little area where you can conduct virtual meetings, you know, if you still need to be on site, uh, you know, at your, your office. So um, as you can see here, uh, I have lighting that's in front of me, right? So I have two types. I have, uh, they're all LED, so they don't, uh, they don't uh, give off a lot of heat, which is very nice. Uh, and they have settings where you can go either warm or cool light. And I find this useful depending on, you know, the time of day. Uh, I do have windows in the room that I'm using. So in addition to the adjustable uh, blinds I have 
and you know standard uh, fabric window treatments, uh, the light profile changes throughout the day. So uh, the uh, one light pictured on the right is a stick lamp, and it's operated. Here's the remote. It's operated on a remote, and this is great because when I'm in a meeting, if it, it's running long, and the you know sometimes it's sunny and then it's cloudy and the light changes, I can easily adjust the light using this remote right while I'm presenting. Uh, so it's fantastic. Uh, also, you can see here, I do have uh, a webcam. Uh, this I use a razor webcam, which it's like a two for one. It has a built in ring light, which is very nice again to help illuminate um, your face. Of course, everyone wants to see you uh, to make the great first impression like we've talked about. I have a I use a Yeti microphone. Um, I'll just swing it out here in front. Uh, so this is on an adjustable swing arm, as you can see in the picture. Uh, and again, you can put anything on an adjustable arm. I did this so uh, I can use my desk space, especially when I'm not conducting video meetings. I didn't want a, a microphone stand sitting on my desktop. I just really don't have that space. Uh, also pictured here, you can see a sliver to the right. I have an additional monitor, and this is fantastic to increase productivity. Uh, for example, if you are, uh, you know, we participate in so many webinars, right? But you have other work to do, other, other things going on, or you're sharing your screen and presentations, uh, you can use that additional monitor to go ahead and, and, and uh, share your content while uh, doing work on your main device. So uh, very helpful to kind of get, you know, the most out of your day with getting all your work done. Also pictured here uh, on my desktop, the, the white cable uh, is uh, uh, going into my uh, extender for uh, connecting all my devices is my direct line connection uh, that runs up to my attic in my home and directly out of my house. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not sharing uh, bandwidth with, um, you know, my husband who's uh, now permanently working from home. So uh, that's very helpful. And I also, uh, I, I forgot to mention earlier, another way to increase your, uh, your, your device speed, if you must rely on Wi-Fi, is to offload video content that you have on your device. Video takes up a lot of space. So uh, the best way to do that is if, you know, you have cloud storage space or if you have an external SSD drive, uh, there's all kinds available uh, today. I'll show some pictures uh, later in the presentation uh, about, uh, you know, what, what uh, you know, suggestions, but, you know, this is a great way. They're portable and you can offload all of your video content. And again, that that's another way to boost your internet speed if you're relying on Wi-Fi. And again, pictured here, there are many equipment options. This is what has been working for me. Uh, and then I, I pictured here an, another type of green screen we mentioned uh, two weeks ago. So, you know, again, it's, you know, trial and error and also what your budget is. Most of these items, like the microphone was, uh, my, my maximum budget is like $100 on an item. So uh, the microphone, I, I like uh, the blue products. I feel like they sound the best. Uh, when you're off site, for example, or you have to take a client call, I use a headset. Uh, that helps reduce background noise. You know, let's say you're in a, you have to take a call in a, a coffee shop or something or in your car, you know, it really helps reduce um, uh, the, the background noise. Pictured here also is a, a, a crucial SSD drive that I mentioned where I offload all of my video content to. Uh, and I know Jamie, um, you uh, use the, uh, this USB connection. Can you talk about that? You're exactly right, Gina. So um, in the bottom uh, corner, the blue box is um, like an added power bank. So whether you wanted to use something like this, that's what I actually have everything plugged into behind. Because like Gina, I'm joining you from a shared space. So uh, where I am, like where the desk is positioned, just because it's better for lighting and, you know, without rearranging my entire home, um, I'm not really close to an outlet and it would be a tripping hazard or I risk someone like my dog, which I will tell you in the very beginning of joining from Zoom, she ran over the cord, unplugged it, and there went my meeting. So I, um, to avoid all those cords running all over the floor, I plug directly into the power bank that's just sitting on my desk. And so that allows me to not sit near an outlet. So again, if you were 
traveling in a car. Well, no, don't give the meeting while you're traveling in the car. But if your car was parked, but you were giving the meeting from your car, you could also, again, use that power bank. And if, there was also an opportunity to utilize the power bank when the power went out. It was about a half an hour before my program was due to start. And we just lost power randomly, um, not even a storm in sight. So who knows? And so I was able to plug everything in and uh, still give the presentation as if nothing uh, had happened. I don't think anyone knew. So I, I'm a big fan of the power bank. Jean, I think you have one that's a little different than that, right? Do you have a halo? Yeah, so I love the halo. If uh, you've heard of halo, it's a halo battery. Uh, I, I left it in my car because <laughs> I usually keep it in my car. Uh, I actually bought it originally because I was left stranded and I couldn't get a jump, a jump for my dead battery. And Halo allows you to, uh, you know, uh, jump, give yourself your uh, jumpstart your own car by yourself without having to rely on another person. But uh, it also has an outlet built into it. And uh, same thing, power outages. I'm able to plug my laptop right on in and continue what I'm doing. So uh, you can check that out. Uh, available Amazon, and again, everything pictured here. Amazon's the go-to source, and generally we get it within a day or two. And um, they also have a great return policy. I went through multiple green screens before I figured out like what would work for my space. So, uh, you know, again, that's what I love about being able, you know, the, and the convenience, right, of, uh, of, of uh, Amazon. So now I thought it would be great to hear Jamie's story. You know, she is a fantastic example of how she took this challenging situation, right? We are, we are all in this situation for the past two years. And she transitioned her in-person New Jersey-based business to virtual. And, you know, really is a fantastic example of how being agile, right? And, you know, thinking out of the box uh, was able to not only keep her in business, but also expand her business. So, you know, Jamie, how has going virtual, you know, benefited you? Oh, Gina, what a great question. Uh, and who could have imagined, right? But again, we talk about sort of the silver lining to the last two years. So it has benefited me exactly what you said. It has grown my business in ways I could have never expected. Um, so of course, at the very beginning, I was a little scary because I wasn't quite sure what to do for 20 plus years. My job really was uh, packing up my car with a bunch of clutter to show as props with my books, including my newest book, Keep This, Toss That, and uh, shuffling off to probably a local library, maybe a club, sometimes a business, and giving program and signing books and then driving home. And the benefits of virtual, I can now book programs back to back uh, where there's no travel time, maintenance on the car, uh, all of the wear and tear, and of course the you know gasoline. So I'm just saving I'm able to book a variety of programs throughout the day and also to expand the radius. So, you know, without having to incur travel costs or pass the travel costs onto a client, you know, I really could only be within a specific radius, but now uh, it's limitless. And so I found myself giving programs in the UK. I know we have some attendees from Canada. I've been giving a lot of programs in um, Canada, which has been great. And then all the states and, and it opens up globally. So it really has uh, given me an opportunity to expand in ways that I never anticipated. In addition, Gina, the programs I give, right? So initially, most of my programs were based on home organizing, uh, overcoming procrastination, organizing your paperwork and your photos. And it was just sort of that was the uh, program list, let's say. And now all of the work from home programs, right? Each and every one of us has probably experienced having to shuffle all the clutter out of the background unless we had a green screen just to scoop it and move it so that no one saw it on a video. And then everyone's needing to set up a work from home space or a hybrid space. So it opened up a whole new avenue as well. So it, it really has just brought me to a whole nother level where I went from fear, honestly, at the beginning of my business is over to, okay, breathe and let's see where this can take us. And uh, thinking outside the box, Gina, uh, it, it's just brought it to a whole nother level. It's, it's very exciting. Yeah, you know, and you bring up a great point, um, Jamie, because, you know, no matter, you know, what business you're in, I see, you know, today we have, um, you know, author, other authors uh, joining us, videographers, uh, gallery owners. In the past, we've had, um, you know, retail shop owners. 
you know, virtual allows you to connect with your audience no matter where they are, and you can showcase your product. So, you know, Jamie, I'm sure your audience loves that instant satisfaction of you working with them in their space that they can see immediate results. And, you know, uh, the other business owners, you know, you know, let's say you're a photographer, you want to showcase your work, uh, or you're a jewelry shop owner, uh, you know, making jewelry, you can either send kits to your audience, you can do jewelry making online, you know, chefs, any, 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 we've seen it all right over, over the past two years that you can really showcase your product. If you're in, you know, real estate, uh, you know, you could run workshops about, you know, uh, you know, what to look for, you know, new homeowners, or if you're a seller or, you know, looking for, you know, uh, tips for mortgages, all, all things like that. You can really showcase you and your team uh, to help build, expand your business. Um, you know, so Jamie, has your audience, have you been seeing an increased audience uh, because you're able to go virtual compared to when you were in person? You know, without a doubt. So again, travel for me, but also travel for the participants. So those that couldn't get a babysitter, don't drive at night, the weather's not great, uh, it's just too far to come for a variety of reasons. Uh, this has now made it accessible to everyone across the board. Additionally, there's the closed caption feature. So for anyone that you know would find that useful, if you're meeting a client or you're giving a presentation in a meeting room, closed captioning typically is not available. So that's been great to, again, just increase the audience. So it's convenient for, I think, everyone uh, to just log on. And it has expanded it because then someone tells someone who tells someone. And then all of a sudden I've gone from, you know, again, meeting rooms have a particular, you know, number of seats that they can have, especially still if there's guidance on that. So to go in person and, and do a book signing and give a presentation on, you know, organizing your photos or your papers. Well, that's great, but it, we may have 30, 40 people. Um, typically my webinars now, which they're, you know, still offered by the library. So they're free for everyone. I'm able to give, you know, multiple ones a day. Today, I have two scheduled. It doesn't matter where in the world people can join on. And it's basically limitless, right? So if it's a webinar, you know, really limitless. If it's a meeting, it's still up to 100. Um, it just allows everyone to log on. And it does feel very personal. You have a front row seat, right? So from wherever, there's no, you know, I want to get there early and get a front row seat. And you can be in your slippers, right? Uh, you know, corporate on top and cozy on the bottom. So it's, uh, it's, it's really, you know, again, Gina, we, we talk about this all the time, you know, but if you're used to kind of the traditional way of doing things, and then you've got to kind of think outside the box, but just taking a moment to map out maybe two or three different presentations you could give or ways you could connect with your clients. Um, if you're doing, you know, jewelry, you give everyone a kit, mail them a kit, and then do it with them online. If you're a videographer, you know, show everyone the colors that look great. You could do a little styling session where they go to their wardrobe and, you know, bring what they're going to wear. And when they're trying to put on something like white or stripes and you're like, that might not be the best. And so there's so many different ways uh, to do this. And again, silver lining, I've just been really lucky to have thought outside the box early and, and brought the coaching and, and Gina, we've all even talked about sending a photo in, right? So um, prior to a presentation or working with a client, if it's not live, they can send photos and you can give advice. So uh, it really is limitless and it's opened up so many opportunities. Yeah. And you bring up a great point, you know, um, accessibility and the convenience, right? Uh, you know, all the features of virtual, of course, you know, you know, our, uh, culturally, we like, we, we like to be in person, right? And we're not saying, you know, take that out, but, you know, offer a mix and use this, this is a fantastic way to expand your, your business. And, you know, lastly, Jane, you know, you've been in business for almost 30 years. You know, what have the last two years taught you as a business owner? Oh, flexibility um, and a newfound confidence. So I, I didn't know what Zoom was. I would have probably thought it was a video game. I wouldn't necessarily have thought of myself as particularly tech savvy you know, I can manage, but uh, when you start talking ethernet cables and stuff, I felt like I was a little bit at a loss. Um, resetting a modem even, I'm like, I'm not even sure where the power button is. It's just something I never considered before. So flexibility, absolutely. And then just building new skills and having the confidence to put it out there. 
and also listening to my audience. So, you know, try something, ask them, do polls, offer a little something, ask in your newsletter, and then, you know, really the feedback from what they want. So for example, I would give programs on organizing paperwork, right? I think is, you know, as a small business, we're always struggling. What do we do with the receipts? How do I check all my papers? I've got a stack of things to be read. And so I would give a presentation on like just that. It would usually be like 45 minutes and I give all sorts of ideas. But then, um, you know, I kind of ask and everyone's like, well, that's great, but I'm still just taking notes. Like I, I need to know how to do it. And so then, Gina, what I did was to incorporate the actual doing by the way of props and everything that we've shared during our presentations, the idea of getting everyone involved. So they actually bring a pile of papers and we sort it together and they'll hold it up and be like, this is this, what do I do with it? And then I share what to do with it. And what can you keep? What can you shred? But what can you shred regret-free? And uh, where can you shred things? So again, it's just um, listening to the audience, thinking outside the box, doing things a little different, and then seeing where it leads. And for me, it's led all over the globe uh, to clients I never, ever would have had the opportunity to meet before. Um, and one thing just has, has led to another. So it turns out there is clutter uh, in every country, apparently. Yes, uh, you know, and that old adage, you know, only keep it for seven years and shred it. We all have papers, right? Uh, my prop for this week, now we talked uh, last week about uh, a, a technique as an icebreaker, you know, grab something at arm's length and show it, uh, to show it to the group. Of course, unfortunately we're on webinars, so I can't see you all on the other side, but wedged in my filing cabinet uh, for apparently a long time because uh, this is from 1997, I found my checkbook register and gas to fill up my, I had a Ford Escort at the time, uh, gas cost me $12 to fill up at racetrack to fill up my car. Uh, so <laughs> an example of inflation and like, oh my gosh, you know, easier times in our life. But, uh, you know, I thought that was a good chuckle. Of course, we all have paperwork and as business owners, it's never ending, it seems. So uh, thank you for sharing your story, Jamie. And, you know, the takeaway for you all on the other side is, you know, take a moment today, just simple, you know, grab a piece of paper, jot down, you know, two or three avenues that you can use, you know, how you can use virtual to maybe grow your business, you know, uh, you know, can, can and help you connect with you know, your current clients and future clients, you know, Jamie mentioned earlier, word of mouth, right, referrals that that seems to be the strongest way, you know, to build business, um, at least in my experience and those in, in my networking group in my profession. So, uh, you know, just take a moment and just, you know, do a quick brainstorm and, um, you know, see how you can use, you know, virtual and incorporate that in, in your, your daily business. And as we know, you know, as we're, you know, getting out of this pandemic two years later, virtual's here, you know, and, and take advantage of it, especially the cost savings and, and the convenience, you know, over having to travel, you know, all of the time, maybe on site. So we talked a lot today about, uh, you know, uh, the, the tech side of things and, and how to be successful, uh, no matter, you know, what, you know, video meeting platform you do use, what device you have. So here's just a quick checklist. It's also downloadable on my website. If you did miss our previous uh, two workshops together, you can, um, uh, download the uh, checklist from our first presentation. And then also uh, last week's, I have the uh, craft uh, a printable where you can make your own fun little uh, mute sign to bring some levity to your meetings. So of course, lighting, have it in front of you uh, that reduce, reduces shadows. You, you don't wanna be, for example, uh, in front of a window that really makes you look like a shadow creature uh, and, and, and really uh, you know, your audience can't see you. Uh, anything you're using, try to go wired, right? External wired microphone, external webcam. Of course, second to a clear image of you is clear sound in, in terms of making a great first impression. Uh, you may not realize it, but if you are relying on your onboard microphone on your device, it sounds like an echo chamber on the other side to your audience. So uh, if you need to ma make one good investment, I would recommend, you know, a microphone. Uh, also, 
uh, of course, I, I keep going at this, the, the green screen I saw earlier in the chat, somebody said uh, web rounds on sale, so go for it. <laughs> uh, use an additional monitor if you have the space, uh, you know, uh, in your, in your uh, office. Again, that's great to increase productivity uh, where you can participate in meetings and then also have, you know, do work on the side. Uh, if, you, if you can't um, get an ethernet connection, I do recommend, of course, ethernet connection if you can't be wired in. You know, recall some of the tips I've shared, whether it's closing excess browser tabs, you know, uh, you know, if you're doing, you know, streaming video content, you know, fast forward it through prior to your presentation, offload uh, excess videos on your device, it helps increase the speed and uncheck some of those fun filters that we love on Zoom, uh, that also takes up a lot of uh, bandwidth. Test your equipment, that's, that's always the key, right? Uh, test it and, you know, uh try to eliminate you know the unknown right you want to be proactive right and of course rehearse take a few minutes uh you know of course depending on the size of your you know if you're getting a you know big you know trying to land a big account a new client you know rehearse your presentation have paper copies you never know what's going to happen uh, and and you know uh understand the mobile features the mobile uh the mobile version of your video meeting platform uh, you know, in case you do have a, a situation, uh, always have a backup plan, right? So uh, it's been wonderful uh, sharing these past three weeks with you. Uh, you can, of course, uh, check out my website for the downloadables. Thank you to my co-presenters and to Chris and the SBDC team uh, behind the scenes uh, for their assistance in setting all this up. And uh, we're happy to take your questions. So uh, thank you again. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Gina and Jamie, for a wonderful presentation. Um, let me go ahead and um, share the screen here and let's jump into Q&A. So um, as mentioned before, please submit any questions into the little Q&A icon down at the bottom of your um, Zoom window. You know, we had a question about how to do polls and whether the mic should be wired or wireless. Oh, great question. So uh, last week's presentation, since I'm in webinar, I can't show you how to create a poll uh, in our platform. But last week's presentation, I, there's a screenshot showing uh, the poll, polling feature. And uh, just real quickly, on your Zoom toolbar in meeting, you'll see a bar graph icon that says polls. And you can either A, set up your polls in advance when you first create your meeting, or B, while you're in your meeting, just start it a few minutes early because, of course, it's challenging to multitask, right, when you're running a meeting, uh, or assign a role to somebody on your team uh, to set up a poll. And um, Zoom's fantastic. They have actually expanded their polls. You, you, can, you can pretty much administer like the SAT using Zoom polls. Uh, you can uh, ask up to like 250 questions. So uh, great feature, great for icebreakers and, and to get to know your audience. Uh, and then uh, anything you use, uh, I recommend go wired. Do not rely on Bluetooth. Do not rely on wireless. I had a situation, uh, you know, I'm a Zoom trainer and they're like, oh, when you run a microwave, it'll kill your meeting. I actually had that situation happen uh, with a client uh, where they were offsite and uh, somebody was making lunch in their staff room fired up the microwave, killed everything. So if you can uh, be wired in, that's that's the way to go. Great and question. And Gina, can you just uh, briefly describe, we had a question about webinar versus meeting. Yeah, so uh, just in short, webinar is more of a broadcast like we are today, right? I can't see you, your interaction really only with us is, is through the chat or Q&A. And um, webinar, again, you could find all this information out on, uh, go to zoom.us. Uh, they, have, they have a nice chart there showing you the differences. Uh, a meeting, which I, I like, is more interactive, right? And you can see your audience, that, that standard gallery view, and it really gives you that more personal feeling, you know, that more human feeling uh, versus webinar. Uh, you can get large meeting add-ons. So for example, uh, if you think you're going to have more than 100 participants, right, 
uh, you can get a large meeting add-on and boost that up to 500 participants. And the same with, uh, I think webinar now accommodates, you could accommodate thousands on webinar. So, uh, and it depends, there's all different, you know, fees and packages. You're gonna have to check out Zoom for their latest, you know, uh, fee schedule for, for uh, that. But just keep in mind, uh, meeting, you know, uh, meeting, if you're in meetings and you don't have a Zoom account, right, you don't have a license, you're not a paid Zoom, you don't have a paid Zoom license, your meetings are limited to 40 minutes for two or more participants. So that's challenging, right, to run a meeting. Uh, if you your, your time to 40 minutes doesn't work for me, I'm a talker, <laughs> all my programs run for generally about an hour. So, uh, you know, d definitely check out uh, the pro Zoom license. Great question. Thanks for that. Awesome. Anyone more questions? Uh, don't be shy. You can ask anonymously. Or you can message me and if you want me to say it. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put my email in the chat. And um, again, if you think of any questions or whatever, just shoot me an email. I'm happy to help you all out. Gina, we have a hand up from Marsha. Okay. Uh, Marsha, what's your question? You can put it in the chat or the Q&A for Chris. Um, or you're welcome to email me, Marsha, if you have a question. Um, I'm happy to answer that through email. Yeah, I think you did a wonderful job. There are no questions at all. Okay, great. Well, thank awesome. you again, everyone. And um, again, any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Jamie. We're always, we always have clutter. We will never conquer that. Jamie will be in business forever. <laughs> That's a solid business plan right there, right? And uh, again, thanks to SBDC. Uh, looks like they have a fantastic program coming up next week uh, in celebration of Women's History Month. Yeah, yeah. So um, a little bit about next week for everyone. Uh, Thursday, we're going to have Nicole Russell. Um, she's over at the Women's Center for Entrepreneurship. And she's going to show us resources for women entrepreneurs. Um, so again, in celebration of Black History, oh, sorry, Women's uh, History Month, Black History Month was last month. Um, but yeah, go ahead and point your smartphone camera to that code there. You don't need to take a picture. You just hover over it. A link should pop up. You click that link and you'll get to the registration page for uh, this event. So with that being said, we're the NJSPDC. We've helped over 13,000 small businesses, no cost small business consulting, training and events starting at $0 and small business resources. To get started, go ahead and visit njspdc.com slash request dash counseling, or just scan the code. Uh, again, thank you again, Gina and Jamie. Um, hope to see you guys again soon. And um, to everyone else, have a great uh, Thursday. Take care, everyone. Nice to see you all.